General aviation covers many kinds of flying activities and many types of aircraft. What they all have in common is that it is easy to monitor them in the VHF airband spectrum with your scanner or software defined radio. Join us as we discover how to monitor general aviation communications. General Aviation, or GI for short, includes most non-airline and non-military flights. For example, private and recreational flights, corporate and business flights, flight training, aerobatic and competition flying, ultralights, or microlights as they're known in some countries, gliders and hot air balloons, airships or blimps, Police, EMS, air ambulance and medivac flights, news helicopters, parachute and skydiving aircraft, as well as aerial surveyors, sightseeing tours and more. Today's episode is about discovering the frequencies used by these GI flights, particularly in the US, Canada and the UK, but much of the information will apply in other countries too. First, I will mention that if there's a lot of controlled airspace around, then many GI flights will call in to the relevant control authority, for example, a larger airport control tower or terminal control frequency. I hear a lot of GI traffic on the Edmonton terminal frequencies, including parachute jumping, uh, news helicopters, medevac flights, police aircraft, air ambulances, flight training and sightseeing. The best way to access frequencies for individual airports is from the official publications. If you're a free member of the flightplan.com website, you can access the current charts and VFR maps that many general aviation aircraft use. These charts are good for both the US and Canada. When you're logged in, click Navigation, Digital Charts, enter an Aerodrome ICAO code, and you can view the chart with frequency information. To access the wide area charts, hit navigation and digital charts again, but this time click the sectionals radio button. From there you'll be able to zoom in on the area of interest. Here close to the Mount Rushmore monuments you can see Custer County Airport who use a common traffic advisory frequency or CTIF for short of 122.8 MHz. A few miles east, you have Custer State Park Aerodrome using a CTAF frequency of 122.9. Moving northeast, we can see that Rapid City Regional has a control tower frequency of 125.85 and when the tower is closed, the frequency reverts to CTAF on 122.95. You'll notice that CTAF and Unicom frequencies from smaller airports are used over and over again. These are the most commonly used ones in the US. It's a good idea to have them programmed into your scanner or SDR. In Canada, the common aerodrome traffic frequencies, mandatory frequencies and Unicom channels are the following. While it's a good idea to have them programmed in, it's always best to consult the charts so you know the exact frequencies in use for your area. In the UK, the system is a bit different and most frequencies are now based on the 8.33 kHz spacing prevalent across Europe. Fixed wing aircraft at aerodromes without an assigned frequency use a channel called SafetyCom on 135.48 MHz. Helicopters use DEPCOM on 122.955, so it's good to have these in your scan list. However, most airports have assigned frequencies. The quickest way of finding them is to view your regional frequency card found on the NAT site. Links are in the description below. On the Southern England and Wales reference card here, you can see a summarised view of frequencies for each airport. Those that have a frequency only in the AG column will be primarily general aviation airfields, although you will hear GA traffic at many of the tired airports as well. Also on the NAT site, you'll find information on the London and Scottish flight information service frequencies. Private pilots, sightseeing tours, parachute planes, as well as many police and air ambulance helicopters can easily be monitored. Make sure you have your regional frequency programmed in. Another set of frequencies UK viewers might want to monitor are the lower airspace radar service channels offered by the local air traffic services units. 
These typically provide a traffic information service to GI pilots within 30 miles of an ATSU. You can see the frequencies on this downloadable PDF from the NATS site. Several of the large frequencies are manned by military personnel. Back in the US, you will also hear a lot of general aviation traffic on flight service station frequencies. The primary frequency used all over the US is 122.2 MHz. Since this frequency becomes quite congested, other channels have been established. 122.0 was used as a flight watch channel, primarily for weather reporting only, however I have heard that it is being phased out. The other channels listed here are common FSS frequencies, but as I mentioned before, the most accurate information for your area will be found on your local charts, visible on skyvector.com or flightplan.com. You'll notice that on this chart, a frequency of 122.65 has been set for the Bucks Elbow Mountain area. GI flights in that region can call Leesburg Radio. Flight service stations in the US can also establish communications via VOR navigational aids. If in the vicinity of the Gordonsville VOR, for example, flights can call Leesburg Radio on 122.1 and the flight service specialist can respond on the VOR frequency of 115.6. Anytime you see the letter R following an FSS frequency indicates that the VOR can be used for listening to FSS communications. In Canada, the main FSS frequency was always 126.7, but its use is now changing. Generally, it is being used for broadcast only. In other words, the flight service station will broadcast reports of significant weather or other important information without expecting an acknowledgement from pilots. Across Canada now, the frequencies listed here are being used by pilots to call flight service stations to open and close flight plans, request other information and listen for other airborne traffic. So these are the ones you'll most likely want to monitor. Viewers in Canada may be interested in visiting canairradio.com forward slash fss.html. Here you will find a list of the common FSS frequencies that I've already mentioned, but you'll also find individual ones by province. So for example, non-standard frequencies like 118.1 or 121.0 are listed each on the province that it is in use in. So this is a particularly helpful resource for those in Canada. In the US, there are a number of frequencies that have been assigned for air-to-air -air communications between aircraft, gliders and hot air balloons. It's useful to have these programmed in. Quite often, you will also hear air-to-air -air conversations on 123.4, 123.45 and 123.475. In the States, the first two of these are designated for flight testing, however they are all used quite a lot for unofficial air-to-air -air communications. In Canada, just one frequency has been allocated for glider use and that is 123.4. Also, the 123.45 unofficial air-to-air -air frequency can often be quite active. Back in the UK, there are a lot more air-to-air -air and air-to-ground frequencies for gliders, microlights, hot air balloons, paragliders and parachute drop zones. I recommend having these frequencies programmed in if you'd like to monitor these aspects of the general aviation world. In the meantime, I hope you find this episode helpful. If you could find the time to like, share with a friend and subscribe if you haven't already, that would be much appreciated. If you feel like you'd like to make a donation, I'll certainly not stop you from doing that either. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Stay safe out there. This is Frugal Radio, out.